Hello everyone, I hope you all are doing well by God's grace. Today we will be doing a short story, The Necklace. This is written by a French writer, Henri René Guy de Maupassant. He was also known as one of the fathers of modern short stories. This story is about Matilda. I hope by now you have read the chapter already. In that you must have come across an abbreviation, M-M-E dot Matilda. It stands for Madame. Madame refers to a French lady and so throughout the chapter you will read that Matilda Loisel is referred to as Madame Loisel. Now Matilda Loisel, Loisel was her surname, her husband's name. She was a very pretty lady but she was poor and she had this feeling that because of her beauty she was supposed to be born in a very rich household but due to the error of destiny kismet kharab thi that is why she was born in a very poor household she wanted to be married into a rich household because she was that pretty but obviously she didn't have any dowry and so she had to marry a clerk a petty clerk the term petty has been used and petty means small chota mota okay so she was very uh, unhappy with the kind of life she had to lead because she always dreamed of being known for her beauty and becoming famous but that could not happen so she had to lead a very normal and a very simple life and this made her very unhappy she was not happy with the lifestyle uh, because she always dreamed of having a very rich and a very luxurious lifestyle but being married to a clerk she had to lead a very simple life and that made her very upset so she suffered incessantly means continuously she used to feel very irritated when she used to look around her house and see the worn out uh, curtains and the shabby walls and the old chairs so just looking at her house used to make her feel very irritated and very unhappy why her current lifestyle did not match her dreams whenever she even used to cook food and serve it to her husband the husband used to be very excited and he used to uncover the Turin. Turin is a large bowl in which you serve your vegetables and you have a lid on top of it. And so whenever the husband used to remove the lid, he used to be very happy with whatever she would have made. But she used to feel very upset because she used to dream of silverware, elegant dinners and exquisite dishes and beautiful dresses and jewelry. But she had none of this. And just thinking about all this, the entire time made her feel very upset and unhappy with her life. One evening her husband who was a clerk. He returned from his job and he was carrying invitation with him. He gave it to his wife and he was expecting Matilda to get very excited about it. But uh, she just took the invitation, opened it and saw this. Now the husband was very elated. Elated means very happy. He was expecting his wife to be excited about this. But instead of feeling delighted, she just threw away the invitation spitefully. Very angrily. And uh, she was like, what do you think I'll do with this invitation? The husband was very surprised. He was taken aback. He was like, I thought this will make you happy that finally we have been invited to a very grand party, a dance ball and you don't get to go out much so i thought this should make you happy you will be very excited about this not everyone is invited only select people are invited and he was one of them but matilda did not respond in a very good way she stared at him and irritably she looked at him and asked him what do you think i'll wear to such a grand party now the husband was taken aback he was not expecting this to be a problem and he was like why the dress which you wear when we go to the theater that is a very pretty dress you can wear that but by then Matilda had started crying and the husband was stupefied and dismayed dismay means he was feeling sad and stupefied means when someone gets kind of shocked and he's not able to like think clearly he was not very happy to see his wife 
crying because he was not expecting this kind of a reaction from her and then he stammered stammered means atakke bolna that what is the matter why are you crying finally somehow matilda controlled her crying and then in a very calm manner uh, she told her husband that nothing there is no matter it's just that i don't have a dress suitable to wear to such a grand party and it's better that you should give your invitation to someone else some person whose wife is more fitted well fitted than i am to attend such a party she meant ki i'm not of the standard to attend such a party because i don't have that kind of a dress so i don't want to go but obviously on seeing his wife crying the husband was grieved grieved means he was feeling very sad he loved her and so he gave her an option he said matilda kindly tell me how much would a suitable dress cost something simple which will be suitable for this occasion and for even the future use now matilda was a little happy with this offer and she tried of thinking of an amount which will not be immediately refused by the husband because if she would have um, mentioned a very big amount the husband would have told no we cannot afford this so she thought of some small amount which will not like get a immediate no from the husband hame bhi jab kuch mangna hota hai hamare parents se to we don't tell them a very grand amount we always try to uh, think of a amount jisse ekdam na na ho jaye at least they consider so matilda also tried the same trick with her husband after thinking a bit she replied that i don't know exactly but i think 400 francs should be sufficient now 400 francs was a big amount and on hearing this the husband turned a little pale thoda peela pad gaya why because he was trying to save the same amount of money to join hunting uh, the next summer the coming summer next year with his friends who used to go and shoot larks on sundays but to make his wife happy he gave up on his dream and he told her that okay fine i'll give you the amount i'll give you this money 400 francs but just try to find a very pretty dress now the day of the ball approached but matilda she was acting very strange she was feeling very disturbed and very anxious so the husband asked her your dress is ready why are you acting so strangely since one or two days what is the matter she said i am vexed not to have a jewel vexed means very upset very sad and she said that i don't have anything to adorn myself with adorn means sajana right to decorate and she said because of this i will have a very poverty stricken look in the party poverty stricken means mai gareeb lagungi why because i'll be wearing a dress but i will not be wearing any jewelry so i will be looking poor i don't want to go or the husband tried to make her feel better cheer her up and gave her the suggestion that you should put natural flowers that looks very chic and it's in fashion nowadays but she was not convinced she was like no there is nothing more humiliating than having a shabby look in the midst of all the rich ladies so it's better that i should not go i would rather not look poor in front of the rich ladies so i will not be going to the party and then the husband came up with an idea he was like how stupid are we we didn't remember that you also have a very rich friend he suggested that matilda should borrow jewelry from her rich friend named madame forestier and matilda also liked this idea she almost cried that oh i had not thought of this idea this is a good idea i should go and meet madame forestier Now the next day itself Madame Loisel went to meet her friend Madame Forestier and then she told her the story of her distress that I don't have jewelry to go with my dress and Madame Forestier her friend she took out a case from her wardrobe and she kept it in front of Matilda and told her to choose Matilda started going through the jewelry in the box and she saw a few bracelets then she saw a pearl necklace and she also saw a venetian cross which was very pretty she was trying all this jewelry in front of the mirror but she was not able to make up her mind finally she asked her friend madame forestier that do you have any other jewelry so 
Madame Forestier said that see choose for yourself everything is in front of you and then she came across a black satin box and when she opened it there was a superb diamond necklace it was so pretty that when Matilda took it out her hands were trembling and then she put it on her neck and tried it in front of the mirror and she loved it she was ecstatic means she was very happy this is what she was looking for and then she was a little hesitant in asking her friend that because it was a diamond necklace after all so she asked her friend that can you lend this to me only this i don't want anything else and the friend responded yes certainly for sure Matilda felt so happy that she hugged her friend passionately and then she happily went to her house because now she was set for the grand party with a new dress and a borrowed diamond necklace which was very beautiful. Her entire life Matilda wanted to be recognized, to be known, to be admired and finally the day of the ball arrived and it was a success. She was so happy and she was success in the sense that she was looking the prettiest of all. We already know that she was a beautiful lady and that day with the beautiful dress and the diamond necklace, she was looking exceptional. She was acting very elegantly and very gracefully and everyone noticed her everyone asked her name they wanted to know more about her and people wanted to be presented to her means to be introduced to her and everyone was admiring her so her lifetime dream was finally achieved she was very happy with all the admiration which she was getting she danced till 4 a.m in the morning and finally she decided to go home and she found her husband who was half asleep in a salon, a small room along with the party hall. He was there with the other husbands who were also waiting for their wives to be done with the party. And finally by 4 a.m. in the morning, Matilda was ready to go back home. So when they were starting to leave, the husband, he tried to put on the modest wrap on her something like this but although her dress was due the wrap was not or the poverty poor look of the wrap clashed with the elegance of her dress she tried to leave the room hurriedly so that the other ladies would not notice that her wrap it gave a very poor kind of a look she didn't want the people there to know that she was not actually a rich lady the other ladies they were very rich and they were putting on their rich furs on top of their gowns so to avoid being seen in such a poor looking wrap she started running out of the room her husband tried to stop her detain means stop he said wait don't run i will call a cab because it was very late but instead of stopping and listening to him, she started rapidly descending the stairs. But as you know, it was very late and when they finally reached the street, they did not find any cab. So they had no other option and they had to start and it was quite cold. So they were shivering and they were feeling hopeless. They had to walk a great deal and finally they came across a carriage. So this kind of a carriage is something which you find in Paris at a nightfall. And they took this and it dropped them outside their door they went very wearily to their apartment wearily means they were very tired and for matilda it was all over her one successful grand day had come to an end and for the husband he was only thinking that are i have to go for my work within a few hours finally matilda went in front of the mirror she took off her wrap and she tried to um, admire herself one last time before she changed her clothes and she uttered a cry why because the necklace was not in her neck it was missing the diamond necklace was missing the husband was already uh, half undressed because he was changing his clothes and he asked her what is the matter Matilda turned and she told him I no longer have Madame Forestier's necklace he got up and he was like what are you saying it should be here only and they looked everywhere in the folds of the dress wherever there was a fold it checked that it might have got stuck somewhere and then they started looking for the necklace everywhere he finally asked her are you sure you still had it when we were leaving the party she said yes i did feel it in my neck when we were coming out of the 
party he said if you had dropped it in the street it would have made some noise because it's a big necklace so it must have fallen in the cab she asked him if he had noted the number of the cab and obviously that is not something which we generally do so they looked at each other in dismay that they didn't have the number of the cab finally the husband he put on his clothes back and he said okay fine i'm going back on foot the entire way which we have come so that i'll see if we can get the necklace back if it has fallen anywhere on the way i might find it he went and she sat there she didn't even have the strength to go to bed she just was in a shock and she was just hoping that they find the necklace back because it was not her own necklace losing a diamond necklace is a big deal but it's a bigger deal when it's a borrowed thing by 7 am the husband returned but he had found nothing next he even went to the police to the cab offices he even put an advertisement in the newspaper offering a reward and matilda she waited the entire day in a state of bewilderment when you don't know what to do confusion and just shock and then she realized that this was a frightful disaster disaster means musibat to thi hi frightful means it was kind of scary why because now she didn't have anything to return to her friend her husband returned in the evening his face was pale because he had found nothing it was a failure and he was tired and very dejected and then he gave his wife an idea that kindly write to your friend that you have broken the clasp of the necklace clasp is the hook with which we close the necklace and you will return it after the necklace is repaired so the motive of writing this letter was that they would get a little more time to look for the necklace matilda wrote as the husband dictated by the end of the week after a week was over they had lost all hope of getting the necklace back now and loisel the husband within the week he had aged by 5 years and then he finally said that we have to replace the necklace they were not rich and for them to replace a big diamond necklace it was a very difficult situation still they went to a big shop they went to the palace royal and there they found a chaplet of diamonds that is a design which was similar to the one which matilda had borrowed from her friend and had lost the rate of this necklace was 40000 francs this comes somewhere in lakhs of rupees and the shop was offering it to them for 36000 francs now loisel the husband he had 18000 francs which he had inherited from his father they borrowed the rest of the money they made ruinous promises ruinous means something which you know will ruin you in the future like but they didn't have any option so they had to borrow money from a number of lenders finally they collected the amount of 36000 francs deposited it there at the shop and bought the new necklace home now when matilda took back the jewelry to her friend madame forestier madame forestier was a little upset with her she said in a very frigid tone frigid means a little cold that you should have returned this on time i might have needed it because obviously if you have borrowed something from someone the person will not appreciate if you return it late but madame forestier did not open the jewelry box to check the jewelry as matilda was fearing because she was scared that if her friend opens the box and realizes that this is not the same necklace that i had given to her then she might consider me to be a robber and what will i say then but because the friend did not open the box finally matilda came back home matilda now knew the horrible life of necessity necessity means killat although she was previously living a very simple life but she had everything but now her life it changed entirely they had to send away the maid they had to change their lodgings they had to shift from their house to a very small room in the attic to cut down the expenses and to save money for the big debt that they had on their head because that had to be paid off so she and her husband had to make such big changes in their life 
and now she realized that she was living a good life before but one thing about Matilda was that she faced all this very heroically because she knew that she had to pay away the frightful debt frightful because they had borrowed a very big amount of money from various people now Matilda's hard life started she had to wash the dishes wash the clothes dirty linen and she had to do all the cleaning of the house and uh, washing clothes and then going down the house to throw the refuse garbage and then coming back with buckets of water it was a hard task and she had to stop uh, many times to catch her breath but she had to do it and now she was no more concerned about her dress up because she used to dress very normally she moved around like a normal lady now a common lady not like the beauty queen she used to imagine herself to be earlier and now she used to carry a bag shopping bag with her and go for buying grocery fruits to the butchers everywhere and she used to haggle like anything haggle means bargaining to save the smallest amount of money that she could and the husband he also had to work more than one job he was already doing a clerical job along with that he had to do extra work to uh, earn more money in the evenings he used to maintain the books of the merchants the accounts and then even at nights he used to do copying of pages for five sou for one page which is a very small amount of money but he had to work a lot extra to save money and they led this kind of a hard life for 10 years because that is the amount of time it took them to pay off all the debt that they had taken after these 10 years there were several changes in madame loisel she did not look pretty anymore she looked old and she looked like a woman belonging to a poor household she looked very strong hard and crude her hair used to look very messy and her dresses were also very messy now she was not concerned about that anymore her hands had turned red because of the hard work she did for 10 long years and her voice also had gone very loud now she didn't talk uh, in a very sophisticated manner but she was very loud like a lady of a very poor household and uh, she even used to wash the floors with very big pails of water means she had now learned the odious work of household everything which she had made for before during these 10 years she had done all the house chores herself and this had transformed her from a very pretty lady to a very old aged and rough looking lady but sometimes when her husband used to be away at his work, she used to sit on the window and dream about that one day which was perfect for her. The day when she was looking the prettiest and that was the day which had actually ruined everything for her. But still she would dream about that perfect day when it was all dreamlike and she was admired by everyone and she would think of how beautiful she was looking that day and how she was feeling flattered everyone was talking about her and then she even used to think if she had not lost the necklace that day how different her life would have been but then she used to think that who knows because life is very singular one small thing can change everything so she used to think of how that one day had changed her entire life it was her best day but it was also the worst day of her life because of that day she and her husband had to live a very bad life for 10 whole years one day finally when she was taking a walk by champs elysis it's a place where she was taking a walk on a Sunday to rid herself of the cares of the week which means to relax herself to calm her mind and not think about the worries which she had when she was walking she suddenly perceived a lady walking with a small child she could make out that the lady was Madame Forestier the friend from whom she had borrowed the necklace Madame Forestier still looked pretty she was still young and she was still looking attractive unlike Matilda who was now quite old and who had lost her attractiveness because of the hard life Matilda was affected affected means 
looking at her friend who was still young, she felt a little bad. Then she thought if she should go and talk to her. But finally, she made up her mind and she was like, why not? I have paid back all the debt. Now I can at least tell her the true story. She approached her friend and said, good morning, Jian. Madame Forestier was a little taken aback and she was astonished to be addressed so familiarly by some normal poor lady. She could not recognize Matilda and she said that uh, I don't know you madam but then Matilda said I am Matilda Lois. The friend she got shocked and she literally uttered a cry of astonishment. She was so shocked and she was like oh my poor Matilda how have you changed? The last Madame Forestier saw her Matilda was very pretty and now in a span of 10 years Matilda had lost all her beauty so she was shocked that how have you changed what happened Matilda responded saying yes I know I have changed it is because that I have had very miserable and bad days since I last met you and it is all because of you now Madame Forestier was taken aback she was like because of me how then Matilda asked her do you remember the diamond necklace that I borrowed from you to wear to that ball and her friend said yes I do then Matilda finally said that well I had lost it the friend was surprised she was like how is that possible since you have returned it to me and Matilda finally clarified saying I had lost your necklace but the one I gave to you was a similar one which we bought and returned and it was not easy for people like us to buy a diamond necklace. It took 10 years for us to repay the debt. But now it is over. We have paid all the debt. Now I am happy and I am decently content. Finally, Matilda was content. In the beginning of the story, when you read, she was not content with her life. And now after working hard for 10 long years, finally she was content. Madame Forestier stopped short. She was like, what? You bought a diamond necklace to replace what you had taken from me? And Matilda felt very proud when she said, yeah, they were just alike. You could not make out that the necklace which we returned was not yours. We got a very similar necklace. She smiled proudly. She was feeling proud that they could return the necklace. They didn't have to feel ashamed in front of Madame Forestier for losing the necklace. So Matilda felt very proud and very happy that yes, we were successful in returning your necklace. Madame Forestier was very touched and she took both hands of Matilda in her hands and very emotionally she told her oh my dear Matilda mine were false that was a fake necklace that was imitation jewelry they were not even worth over 500 francs imagine the shock which Matilda must have got she ruined 10 years of her own life and her husband's life for replacing something which was not even a real diamond necklace all because she was not ready to accept her fault in front of her own friend because of her false ego. She could have told Madame Forestier that I have lost her necklace and then at least she might have come to know that it was a false necklace. And she would not have paid 36,000 francs, which is somewhere in lakhs, to replace a fake necklace. So this is the irony of the complete story. This is a twist which came that throughout the story, the necklace, which was a matter of pride for Matilda, she was thinking that it is a necklace of real diamonds. It was a fake. So this is the plot twist which we got. And it also makes us realize that appearances can be deceiving. Appearance wise, the necklace looked of real diamonds, but it was not. I hope that this story is clear to you. In case if you have any doubt or any query, do let me know. God bless you. Love your parents. Stay home and stay safe.